I am giving a homeschool update. We are a couple weeks into our school year. Let me just say, I don't know if we've had even one like normal, typical day, if that's telling you anything. And hopefully it makes you feel a little bit better if the year's not going exactly how you planned either. But I'll get into that in a second. My name is Lauren. I feel like I haven't done an introduction in a long time for any of my videos. And I have four girls. I homeschool three of them. They're in seventh grade, fifth grade, and third grade. And then my youngest is just one years old. So she just kind of tags along with us. She is our little like school mascot. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to get right into our video, just sharing kind of like what's been going on the last couple weeks and something that I have added to one of my daughters that I'm really excited to share. We started our co-op and uh, we are a couple weeks into that and it is going so far. I don't want to jinx anything. We're some wood to knock on. It's going really, really well. So far, my girls have already like started to make some friendships and gotten to, you know, make connections and things. All of the moms I've met have been so nice, so lovely. We've done homeschool groups and things like that in the past, like hope this homeschool class or that. And um, the girls didn't really make a whole lot of connections. So I have a good feeling. Again, it's a little bit early, but I feel like it's going to be a good fit for us. I'll let you know. I'll keep you updated, but so far so good. They're all each individually taking their own science courses, which is something new. We usually do science together as a family, but then this year they're able to just be in their own classroom and have their own separate science that's just for them, for their grade. And so they're all enjoying it so far. And then they each take an elective. So my oldest one is taking cooking and baking this semester and she loves it she's so excited after she comes home or after co-op she's like oh i got to cook this today and then um my middle daughter is taking art class which she's not usually my artist so i didn't know but how it was gonna go but she really enjoyed it and then my youngest one is doing spanish so we're gonna see how that goes. None of them, um, since we were new, they weren't able to like choose what they were, what their elective was. It was kind of like whatever was open. But next year, going into it, if we continue for next year, um, since we're already in the system, so to speak, like they'll have a much better chance of getting something that they really wanted to do. So we'll see how that goes. But that's that's kind of what they're doing now. And then. For me uh, and my my one-year-old, I am actually in like the nursery preschool with her. So we just get to hang out all day. So speaking of art and electives and things like that, I've shared many times on here, my third grader, she loves art, like loves it, loves it. Like she hurries and gets done her math and her language arts just so that she can draw and do art. Like constantly all day long and so she was very disappointed when she wasn't able to do art this um for her elective she really really wanted to do it i have actually been looking it's on my list like find a good art course for lola i want something that will give her formal instruction like she does doodling and she does drawing on her own but like this will take it to the next level it'll give like i said formal instruction on like direction on how to actually draw certain things so it was so great like at the beginning of the school year end of the summer beginning of the school year Sparketh reached out to me and I saw the courses that were offered and I was like this is perfect this is exactly what I've been looking for and it will be perfect for her they have so many different type of art courses that they offer so they have like abstract drawing, they have food, they have animals, which I know will be her number one thing. And what's really cool is that the the courses are like broken down into little couple minute, like two, three, four minute videos. So it's perfect for kids. It's actually geared for ages six to 18. Now, if you as an adult want to like, use some of your art skills and brush up on some of them, then I'm sure that that would be fine for you too. But it's perfect for kids because the lessons aren't super long and they're broken up into like bite-sized chunks. So if they only have time to do a couple of the lessons in the course, they're only, each lesson is only two or three minutes long. So they're not sitting there watching a whole 20 minute video unless they're like, you know, like my daughter who sits, who wants to watch all of it all at once. I'm really excited to see like how her art uh, kind of evolves over the next year and how the courses actually really help her. She just, like I said, loves it. If you have one who really, really loves art, I recommend 
um, doing Spark It, or if you have two. So in each account that you have is good for two kids. So if you're like mine and they have one account that my kids always fight, they always need like their own separate accounts for their own, their own different levels, their own different things that they're doing. So each account is good for two kids. And then if you want up to, you know, more, it's only, I think it's like $5 a month extra for any extra children that you have. If you're interested, you can try it out. If you're looking for just a really good art class, teaching class, something that you don't have to do, I have a code and you can get one month free. So if you just want to try it out, you're not sure, there's no obligation, there's no cancellation fees, you can cancel at any time. It'll give you a really good feel for how for how you like the course and how your kids will enjoy it. I really think that they will like it. If you have an art loving child, I highly recommend trying it out. Or even if you don't really have one who loves art, but you still want them to participate because it's super great for your brain just to learn to draw and just to use that part of the brain. I totally recommend it. Again, you'll get a one month free trial. We're on our fourth week right now. And um, we've just had a lot of like the first week we had like some interruptions. My daughter, one daughter was sick for over a week. Um, so we had a couple doctor's appointments and just, you know, normal stuff that happens. Um, my sister came to town to visit for a couple days, which is a very uh, fun interruption and welcomed. Um, but we were able to do a little bit of school, but you know, just the days were off. So. As far as our routine goes, we sort of have one quasi, but like we haven't really been able to execute it fully. Even like today has been a little bit off, but that's okay. It'll, it'll be fine. Uh, we're still kind of plowing through and getting our work done. So as far as how the school year starting, I posted a video a couple weeks ago and I was sharing how um, back in the summer, like uh, mid August, beginning to mid August, we started doing our um, like our history and our Bible time together, which we always do as a family. And then my older two did started with their language arts and my younger one started with her math just to kind of get a head start. We didn't officially start the school year till September and we usually don't usually start till beginning of September, end of August type thing. But this kind of just let us jump forward a little bit and kind of get our feet wet a little. And so at first I was like, oh, I don't really know. I'm not really in the school mood, but I'm actually really glad we did it. Last year looked a little bit different for us. We started on, we started all of our subjects um, on the first day of school, with, except for science and history. And then a couple weeks after we started school, I added science. And then a couple weeks after that, I started history. Uh, and the reasoning was just to kind of have it like a gentle introduction. And I know that works for a lot of people and it was okay. It worked for us, but not really by the end of the year. We were, I feel like we didn't get as much done as we could have and felt like a little bit behind and like I was playing catch up. And so I actually like this a little bit better because we're officially only three or four weeks into our school year, but we're kind of ahead with our, with, with our um, language arts for my two daughters and then for our, our, we call it a morning basket, which is basically our Bible and our history. So I actually really like this. I think, well, you, it, it's a little bit early to say, but I think I might do this for next year, but we'll see. We'll see what happens. For our group subjects, our family subjects, we always do Bible together. And then this year we're doing history. Like I said, last year or in every single year, we've always done science together and history. This year it's just history. So I'm gonna share a couple things that we've read and then like a couple of our read alouds and things like that. So first, um, I shared that last year I did, this was um, Early American History. This is from Beautiful Feet Books. This is their primary grade. So like kinder, technically it's kindergarten to third. I thought it was appropriate. My, my oldest was in sixth grade and it was, it was fine. Um, but they only went up to like the Civil War. They ended it after the Civil War. And then if I wanted to do their uh, going to modern American history, it's grades, um, I think fifth to eighth grade, it's middle school. But uh, we ended up going with Sunlight, their modern American history, which picks up at the Civil War. And the only reason is I just kind of looked at the book selection. They're both literature-based history programs. And then I spoke with a mom who um, 
she's here on YouTube. Uh, I really like her channel, Calm in the Chaos. She told me she's done personally done both. Her kids are a little bit older and she just said, in her opinion, the one from Beautiful Beat Books seemed like a little bit more mature and a little bit definitely for that solid middle schools, middle schoolers. And then that beautiful, or that sunlight was, would be better probably for younger kids. So again, mine are in third grade, fifth grade and seventh grade. And so it is technically for middle schoolers, but my third grade tags along. So I have chosen sunlight. So I didn't quite finish this beautiful feet books last year. I kind of, we kind of went over it in the summer. And then, like I said, this ended at the civil war and sunlight picks up right before the civil war. So I was kind of looking ahead. I'm like, this is going to be like 10 weeks of the civil war. And my children are going to be like, okay, we we're, we're done. We can't handle any more of this. Um, so what we did is I kind of merged the two together. The one from that we were supposed to read the civil war book that we were supposed to read, um, was across five April's and that was supposed to take wait, like four weeks for us to read that. I'm sure it's fine, but I was like, uh, let's, let's skip that. So instead of reading that, what I did is just, I finished the last of our, of our books. So we read Moses. Again, this is beautiful feet books. This is what came with it. Uh, Crossing Bach Cheeto. Henry's Freedom Box. I added this my own. I've had this for a couple years. Um, Abraham Lincoln, the story of him. The Hannah. This was really, really good. Uh, she's a Quaker and she lives in Philadelphia around the time of the Civil War. Basically, she hates being a Quaker. She doesn't get it. She doesn't understand why she's got to look different and and she just wants to fit in like all her other friends. And it's so, it's so funny because it's like even a Quaker back in 18 whatever, 50 or 60, could relate to, you you know, girls like us today. It's from a girl's perspective, but I'm sure boys could relate too. But um, yeah, she just didn't feel like she fit in. And so kind of at the end, it all came to a close. She, they ended up helping a, um, a slave family kind of escape. And so I had tears in my eyes at the end. I could relate to this growing up. And so I really like this, the Hannah. And then after um, after the Civil War, uh, beautiful feet books ended with Buffalo Bill, kind of like the Wild West. And so it kind of merged in. And so that was the end of Beautiful Feet. We are finished with that. So we read all of that together. And then before, actually, I will say, before we did got into the Civil War, we did The Great Turkey Walk. This is our sunlight book. This uh, was the first book that they recommend to read out loud as a family. So we read this. My girls really liked this one. Uh, he's This boy has to take like 500 turkeys from, I believe, Missouri to Colorado and just kind of like all the adventures that they get into and do they make it? We'll have to see. So how sunlight works is they have a read aloud list that they give to you that you're supposed to read, you know, as the name implies, read aloud to your family. And then they have separate readers that is just for your student or students, plural. And so the readers is actually what my seventh grader is gonna be using for her literature this year. So I'm giving her the readers to read separately. So she read Freedom Train. This is the story of Harriet Tubman. And so there's questions and things like that in the back of sunlight that they provide. And so comprehension questions. So she's doing that. And then she's also currently reading. She has it upstairs in her room. Uh, Turn Homeward Hannah Lee. And she said she really likes that one. She's like, normally I just have to read my chapters, you know, just to read them. She goes, this one I don't want to put down. I want to read ahead. And so she's really liking Turn Homeward Hannah Lee. This was supposed to be one that my daughter read on her own, but some of them we're just going to listen to. Uh, this was a recommended reader they're supposed to do independently. Um, but I was like, this one sounds kind of cool. So we're going to, it was the by the Great Corn Spoon. That was the first book that for the year for sunlight. And so we just listened to that on audio all together. All of us listened to by the great horn spoon and it was done really well too. So I'd recommend if you don't have the book, listen to it on audio. And they have a Disney movie called the adventures of bullwhip Griffin that is based on that, that we're going to watch. It's made, for, it was made like in the sixties or something. The last one that I've added, because we have one more week, like I said, we were supposed to read, uh, across five Aprils. That was our civil war book. We were supposed to read that for like four weeks. All of these, that's what we read instead of reading across five Aprils. Uh, we finished that. And so we're reading 
thunder rolling in the mountains. I'm not sure if you can see that too well. This is about the Nez Pierce tribe. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. That's how I've always heard it pronounced. So this is in 1877. So it's really cool because while we're, we're, we're learning about what's going on in like the industrial revolution and they're making like, they're doing steel and drilling for oil and, and all of that. What, what's happening here to this tribe, this Native American tribe who's being forced from their land. So we're only a couple chapters into it. We'll hopefully finish it this week. It's not too long of a book, but I just, I'm trying to be like comprehensive and so that they can see kind of like what's going on, that these aren't just isolated events. Like it wasn't just the civil war happening. There was other things happening as well. It wasn't just them you know, like I said, like doing the steel industry and all that, this was happening as well. And so just try to be a little bit comprehensive to get a general picture of what's going on. So that is history. That's a lot. But yeah, so after that, I'm finished with like tweaking around. We're just going to follow what sunlight has to offer. I think I added one or two books because of course, why wouldn't I? But for the most part, we're going to stick with what sunlight has to offer. As a reminder to you, if you're using something that just doesn't seem to fit, and I'm sure you already know this, but just a reminder, you can always tweak things so that they work better for you. So how sunlight has it written out. These are their two Bible courses that we're doing. This is starting strong. Um, and it's kind of more of like a devotional type. And then this is Case for Creator, and this is an apologetics book. So they want you to, they kind of leave it open-ended. They say like, just do this one chapter all throughout the week so you can set the pace. This you're supposed to do once a week on Wednesdays. So I found that the first couple weeks, like I would read just one chapter accordingly, but then when the next week came, it was like, what were we talking about? What were they saying? Because this is kind of one that's like, you just kind of need to keep up with it. I felt that we couldn't really, reading it once a week wasn't enough. Um, so what we're gonna do is I'm going to pause this. And since we're already in the middle of this, um, again, this is like just offering a lot of scientific evidence for a creator. And so I'm just going to read a chapter a day of this for our Bible until we're finished with it. And then when we're finished with this, then start back up with starting strong. This is technically three books in one. And again, it's like a devotional. So that's kind of, I'm, I'm not dropping one. I just want to, I just want to make sure that this, we really get a good grasp of this. And it just felt choppy only doing it once a week. Whereas this, we can pick back up anytime. It doesn't matter if we put that down for a little bit. So um, what else? And then lastly is just our read alouds. You guys recommended back in the summer, I was asking about, um, I shared a couple books and I got, it felt like a bunch of comments. It was probably only like three or four, let's be honest, but it felt like a lot. And it was for recommending for, cause I had the Trumpet of the Swan, the actual book. And you, a lot of you said, do the Trumpet of the Swan, Swan audio. And it's read by E.B. White, and he has like this old school New York accent that I'm not going to try to replicate, but he, it was really cool. And so we listened to it, and at first my kids were like, oh, we don't want to listen to this. And so I was like, mm -mm -mm, we're going to listen to it. And so we did, and they really liked it. They they really enjoyed it. Uh, my oldest daughter, again, seventh grade, she's like, I'm gonna really miss listening to the trumpet of the swan. So you guys, totally good recommendation. Uh, we're also listening to, we listen to the Penderwicks. It's four girls and like the adventures they get into. And it kind of reminds me a little bit of my four girls. Of course, my baby isn't verbal yet, but I just the older three, kind of how they do. Um, so yeah, so they're, we're listening to that. So anyway, that's history. That is Bible. Uh, that is our co-op, which science, our electives, what else? Um, I also have individual subjects that I'm not going to get into. I will leave those videos down below if you're wondering like, well, what does your daughters do for math or language arts or this or that? I've made videos on, on all of that. And so I'll link those below. I'll just say everything so far is working. We're not changing anything. We haven't added anything else, taken anything away. So everything you'll see in those videos is exactly what we're doing. Again, we're three, four weeks into the school year. We haven't, I don't see us needing to change anything. Um, at this point, it's all 
working fine and smooth and um, no changes. I hope to see you guys soon in another video and I will talk to you soon. Bye guys.